Lionsgate has taken down its trailer for Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis after using fake quotes from movie critics for the footage. But the negative quotes featured in the trailer do not actually appear in those vintage reviews. A Lionsgate spokesperson said in a statement, Lionsgate is immediately recalling our trailer for Megalopolis. The filmmaker spent decades getting the $120 million epic off the ground. What? <laughs> Man, I am absolutely starting to hate this new half-assed trope that is spreading around like an incompetent but deadly virus throughout the majority of these major studios. You know one of those things? Just those random aspects of society that just get under your skin? The ick is what the young people call it nowadays, that you just didn't really know you had because, you know, you've never been in a situation or an environment to figure out that said ick? That is how I feel about Hollywood right now. And while that is a very generalized statement, seeing how the majority of audience members could pick out a number of things that Hollywood is half-assing right now in our current Hollywood climate, but this trope of dumbing down audience expectations through trailers, promotions, and interview sound bites has to be one of the most deliberately toontown ideas to come out of the clown city that is Hollywood. And the fact that these studios are trying their best to masquerade this tactic as a viable marketing campaign is lunacy to say the least and damn near a slap in the face to the general audience as a whole, seeing how this is a strategy that is not even proven, and for the majority of the time, is a strategy or tactic that does not even work. I'm looking at you, Madam Web. A new movie coming out. It's called Madam Web. It is in the Marvel Universe. <laughs> And frankly, it only furthers my own personal outlook and notion on how most of our Hollywood producers, writers, talent, or lack thereof, and head studios have their heads shoved so far up their own asses that they pretty much have become comatose on their own supply, slowly but surely becoming so creatively devoid that simply throwing in the towel in regards to the marketing and just accepting the L when it comes to the box office upon release. And while we, the audience, have seen this tactic come in all shapes and sizes over the past couple years as this strategy has taken flight amongst the elite of imbeciles running the show of these major studios, examples such as attacking a certain fandom in a way to shift the goalposts or narrative about the quality of that said product, or just the classic new Hollywood comeback of this wasn't made for you. When that mindset has literally never been a thing until about a half decade ago when this desolate wasteland of a Hollywood era started, we all just want escapism. It has literally never changed and more than likely, never will. But even with that being said, we as an audience have seen this strategy quickly implemented into the mainstream with shows and movies such as The Velma Show on HBO Max, the recently canceled Star Wars fan fiction, and Leslie Headland passion project The Acolyte, which I guess now is just actually fan fiction. And even most recently with the negative reviews and blatant fan backlash of the live-action Minecraft movie. I can't believe they just have Jack Black playing Jack Black. This isn't a Minecraft video, but man, what a terrible decision. The point of this yapping session is that this strategy, this new age Hollywood tactic, is never going to work. And after cruising to an abysmal $4 million opening weekend for a movie with a $120 million budget... Francis Ford Coppola's newest crime against my eyeballs, Megalopolis, is bound to go down in the history books as one of the best examples of this failed strategy in real time, even if people don't remember this head-scratching and confusing turd on a screen. Now, if you are no stranger to being the chronically online type, then it will come to no surprise that this outcome was the outcome we as an audience are forced to stare down the barrel at. And while don't get me wrong, and I was talking about this with one of my mates, so it's just a theory, but it's going to be absolutely hilarious in like 10 years when the YouTube giants of 2023 mock us idiots of the yesteryears and how we just didn't understand the complexity and nuanced ideas Megaflopolis had blessed our screens with. But as of right now, Megalopolis is anything but, and as the title of the movie suggests, it's more like a fable of shit. And before we really break it down, it's extremely rare when I come across a piece of entertainment, either a movie or a streaming show, where there is really just no comparisons in the game right now. To highlight an example of what I'm saying in a more positive light, we just witnessed what I'm saying with the technical masterpiece that Avatar 2 was. To this day, I don't think I've seen effects work as masterful as that movie. 
But on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have a piece of media in Megaflopolis where, admittedly, I could just be an unaware bloke with too low of an IQ to comprehend the messages of human nature, societal norms, the fall of empires, and the hidden meanings within the hidden meanings of social media that this movie is trying to deliver in the first half of the movie, to only then be immediately destroyed in the second half of the movie by extreme tonal shifts, pacing of a six hour movie that was only allowed a third of that time, lack of a cohesive narrative, nauseating cuts and terrible editing choices, head scratching themes, pretentious dialogue sequences that find their way to still feel flat and empty, and worst of it all, and I can't believe I'm going to have to say this twice in one year, but over budgeted fan fiction from a director that doesn't seem like he gives two shits about the financial outcome of his own film and just used it as more of a platform to create the idea that he wrote down on a paper napkin a couple years ago while taking a shit at your local rainforest cafe. And while I'm going to try my best to give my usual plot synopsis, after seeing the film and talking about it at length with my mates and now in this video, it makes so much sense how they weren't able to make a concrete and effective trailer in order to change the narrative. But whatever, let's just go ahead and get into this fable of sh Yeah, now that I'm really thinking about it, I think one of the reasons that I couldn't really get behind this movie is because as someone who is a character-driven person and enjoys character-driven works of entertainment and find it more important than pretty much every other aspect when it comes to storytelling, in Megaflopolis, instead of characters, you have themes and what those characters represent not only on a small scale in just the character interaction sort of way, but what those characters or themes represent on a world view. Megalopolis takes place in the fictional setting of New Rome that just so happens to look a lot like our real life setting of New York, with just a little bit more head-ass Roman architecture thrown around as if New York really needs any more of that influence, and follows Adam Driver's Caesar, a genius playboy philanthropist who sees progress for the city in his vision and new addition to the city, Megalopolis, a utopian-like place created entirely from a new element that he created that we won't get into because it's pretty much just a bullshit element that just does anything the plot needs it to do. An elemental McMuffin, I guess. But when Caesar finds himself falling in love with the mayor's daughter, Julia, basically Caesar's number one op and sees his progressive plan as a detriment to the city and its civilians, Mayor Giancarlo Exposito and the combination of Julia Caesar find themselves in an intellectual battle of traditionalism over progression and the double-edged sword that comes with overarching change, how drastic it could be for the masses, and does progression for the sake of the future justify the means of the present? Wait, did I actually just make that sound like an understandable film? That's actually crazy. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to come off as someone who is genuinely mad or actually frustrated at the fact that Megalopolis just turned out to be a multi-million dollar passion project, because I am not. This isn't a scenario when multi-million dollar fan fiction is actively being promoted instead of, you know, putting that money to good use. But Francis Ford Coppola seems to be rather self-aware of the dumpster fire that was released in cinemas and is very comfortable with the film that he made. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, yes, my zero budget and undersubbed YouTube channel has better foreshadowing than a multi-million dollar passion project, pretty much making me an international scholar when it comes to intellectual writing. Hire me, Disney. But in a time where the phrase of this wasn't made for you gets thrown around more loosely than me with a couple shots of Casa No Migos hit the system, this is truly and wholeheartedly a film made by one person and for one person. And just like with most fan fiction, I'm sure that one person really enjoyed it. So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress for a movie that pretty much told me not to take it seriously because of the poor reception a couple months back at some random ass festival, that does not save Megalopolis from, well, pretty much entering some rare territory here on the Nameless Tears of being absolute shit on a screen. And I don't want to jump the gun and say something outlandish right now, so I'll just wait until later on this year for the 2024 Slander Awards. Also, I do want to say I'll be reviewing The Wild Robot, but I just want to talk about something specific there, so I'm just kind of waiting to see how the box office plays out a little bit. And with Joker 2, a bunch of French words on the way, it's great to have some palate cleansers after the head assery that I just witnessed with Megaflopolis. Anyway, of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go 
check that out. Again, I want to thank you for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.